Good morning, Dallas. Here's your machine, the Breville Oracle BS980 in silver. So as you saw on the photo, this is in good condition. Um, I would give it a seven out of ten. You know, in terms of the external condition, uh, you got the standard wear and tear. You know, scratches around here, some small dents here as well. Um, uh, nothing too much on the left or right hand side. Um, honestly, and on the top side, this slight, this slight discoloration, but. Like I said, standard wear and tear for uh, these things, so um, nothing out of the ordinary. And I finished doing the service last night. Everything is perfectly fine. Um, no issues whatsoever. All the seals have been changed. The, the rubber seals on the inside. Uh, I've done all the cleaning cycles. I've adjusted the grinder, so the machine is pretty much ready to go. Um, so you can turn it on uh, when you wake up. It'll take about five, ten minutes to you know reach temperature or you can program it to wake up in the morning for you there's a clock that you can set it to um, wake up for example at 7 a.m every day and it will be ready by 7 30 for example nice and hot um, after you turn it on you can keep it on for a while to warm things up such as the top tray the portafilter the group head um, but if you're in a hurry you can just run a blank shot that will warm things up quickly as well so if you just turn it on um, and it reaches temperature, you can warm it up by running a blank shot. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can run hot water, so a single or a double quantity, anything is fine. So the cup is nice and hot now, the group head is nice and hot, the water filter is nice and hot. So I think uh, it's a useful step to do, especially um, as the hot water cleans as well. So it'll clean any coffee grounds and oils that are stuck in the shower screen and the group head. So that you don't have to compromise on taste. ready now so that we can do the drink quickly um, when you do the, the warming up of the pour filter obviously it'll be wet so you want to take out a tissue and dry it up it's important to dry the tissue to dry the pour filter basket before using the grinder because any dampness here will affect your distribution and grinding uh, the grind quality I'm going to use my scale to measure things like the input and output. So I think um, it'll give me, give me about 20 grams for this double shot, 20 grams of coffee. We'll just confirm. At the moment, grind size is at number 22. Uh, I, I tested it last night at 25 and it was a touch too quick. So I think 22 will be the, the right, or uh, approximately in the ballpark of the right grind size. Um, just a tip on the grind size. Please only change the grind, uh, only change the grind size with the grinder grinding. You don't want to change it with the grinder stopped. For example, just like that. Uh, and you want to purge. So when you change your grind size, or if you want to get the freshest coffee in the morning, just grind the second or two to purge the old coffee grounds, because there will be old coffee ground uh, ground coffee. In, um, uh, retained um, so every time you change the grind size be sure to purge for a two three seconds now you just turn it to the right and you wait Distributed coffee, uh, uh, pretty much.
pretty much don't have to do anything to it. There will be coffee grounds maybe around the edge, you want to clean that, or maybe loose coffee um, clumps, like very small loose coffee clumps. You just want to turn it upside down to get rid of those. And we got 19.8, pretty much 20 grams. So you can change that dose by increasing or decreasing the height of the tamper. There's a tutorial on YouTube on how to do that. Uh, it's not really necessary. Um, it's not really necessary because I think 20 grams is a good number. So you want to lock it in about dead center. It's pretty tight at dead center, so I'm not going to push it any further. Maybe over time you want to push it a bit to the right. But yeah, you just want to do it tight enough so that it doesn't leak and it grabs onto the rubber seal and it holds pressure. Now, uh, I'm going to dunk or dump the hot water that, that's in my cup right now. Uh, there's also a hot water tap, obviously, for Americano or, um, you know, just warming up your cup or just brewing a tea bag, for example. So I like to use it uh, to add a bit of hot water to my cup. I feel like the hot water helps sugar dissolve. So let's do that. And I'm going to grab a spoon. Perfect. I'm going to use my scale now to measure the output. So, uh, this is a double basket that it comes with. And, and like, a, like you saw, 20 grams of ground coffee. We want to double that in terms of liquid espresso. So, if you put in 20 grams into the handle, we want to get 40 grams out of the handle. So we'll aim for 40 grams. And the bottom here will brew for 30 seconds. Like you saw, the single will do 25. The double does uh, 30 seconds. You can obviously change those in the settings if you wanted longer or shorter cups. So I'm just going to use my scale to, 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 to zero. And uh, we can now measure how much coffee comes out. I'll stop it. If it overflows, but I think we have it in the right right uh, ballpark of grind size because obviously the grind size is what controls your speed of coffee. The tamping is robotically done and it's uh, consistent. The distribution is consistent. The time is consistent. It's thirty seconds. The only thing that you change is the grind size. So if you go finite, it'll slow it down and decrease your quantity. If you make it coarser, the particles will increase. So that means water can go through quicker. That means you'll get more coffee if you increase the ground size. Without any further ado, let's, let's take a look. Obviously the machine will give you a timer and you want to pay attention to uh, how, how quickly the coffee flows. Um, it's quite quick. So I might stop it short. Just around 20 seconds. Yeah, right there. I'll stop it there. So you, you might want to try maybe number 20 next and see if that slows it down even more. It will slow it down even more. Um, let's see. We got a good cup here, I would say. Maybe a touch too long. That was 50 grams. I was aiming for 40 grams, but that's okay. Uh, it's still drinkable, I would say. It's not too bad. Uh, we got some good crema. And the flow is nice and symmetrical. Uh, it was too quick, like I said. So. Um, Take out the port filter. Maybe do this cleaning step while your milk is uh, being steamed. Uh, take out the port filter and clean while your milk is being steamed. So you knock your coffee, the ground coffee, into a knock box. If you don't have one, I do have a spare one for sale. So it's just at an awkward angle, so I can't really get to it. Um, and then after you knock off the coffee, you want to run a blank shot. So like before, just hot water, this time to flush and clean the, the group head and the basket. Uh, 
that should do the trick. Be careful not to burn yourself. Now with the milk, so I'm going to put it on 60 degrees Celsius and then I'm going to put the froth on the frothiest setting just so that I can show you how, how frothy it can get. Uh, you can obviously do the, the, the uh, steaming manually, so if you wanted to be like a barista and you know practice your technique or you want to um, froth the milk to a high level, you can just use the manual mode and lift this up. This is how you can control the, for example, you can control the height of the jug to control the um, amount of air you're, inject you're injecting into the, into the milk. Uh, but yeah, let's put it on 60 degrees maximum froth setting. Uh, I'm using cold uh, milk, it's best to use cold milk, and it's halfway, about halfway through my jug. So uh, with, with the jug that I have, it's about halfway, it depends, it, it might depend on what jug you're using, but make sure it's over that line, there's a, there's a line on the wand, there's a white line on the wand and you want your milk to be at least at that level or higher. It'll stop when it's up to that 60 degrees Celsius. Um, you take it out, you want to be careful not to spill any milk on the counter. Um, just grab a wet towel. So clean it as soon as you can. Grab a wet towel uh, and wipe it off straight away. And when you push it down, it'll clean itself. So it has an auto cleaning feature. So it's on, on the cappuccino setting now. So we've got a fair bit of foam. Knock the jug, swirl it around to kind of mix it up. Not much of latte art. You can practice latte art if you use it, use it on manual mode, I think. Uh, but here it is on the, on the automatic. Got a good double of foam. Looks nice and smooth. Anyway, all that matters is the taste, even though the, the pattern would be a really nice thing to have. You can do that in your own time, uh, obviously with some practice. And yeah, I'm sure you'll love the machine. Um, I think I'm just going to have to change ground size to ground size um, maybe 20 or 18, and you can try it from there. Obviously it's important to use fresh beans. If you're using cheap supermarket beans, you know, most of the things you can find at Coles or Woolworths, most of those are stale and not good enough for this machine. So you want to get fresh beans to get the best results. And I'm sure you'll love it. Thanks for watching.